Welcome. I'm Rhonda Brown, co-curator with Tom Grotta of Brown Grotta Arts. At today's Pecha Kucha with a twist, we will talk through highlights of our fall exhibition, Japandi Shared Aesthetics and Influences, which features 39 artists from Japan, Sweden, Finland, Norway, and Denmark. Before our discussion of the Japandi exhibition, we'll turn first to the twist, our custom cocktail created by our in-house mixologist, Max Vanwick. You can find more of his inspired foods and drinks at at Dude Who Cooks. Our fall 2021 offering is the Jewel Key Cocktail, which loosely translated means yellow, yellow. For one cocktail, you'll need one ounce Japanese dry gin, one ounce dill aquavit, one and a half ounces fresh lemon juice, half an ounce fresh orange juice, half an ounce dill simple syrup, three ounces of club soda, lemon slice and dill for garnish. The directions are simple. Mix all ingredients except club soda in a shaker over ice, strain over fresh ice and top with club soda. Garnish and enjoy responsibly. Now to our art event, a whirlwind view of Japandi, mm -hmm. shared aesthetics and influences. Pechikucha means chit chat in Japanese. It's also, as some of you may know, a presentation format that involves using 20 slides for a 20 second narrative with each. We have participants on mute, but we have the chat function on. So please submit any questions you have. We'll try to answer them at the end. Articles started appearing about Japandi on design and architecture websites and blogs a few years ago, peaking in the last two years. Japandi style refers to shared sensibilities among artists and designers from Japan and Scandinavia. We thought pairing work by artists from these areas to highlight those affinities would make an interesting exhibition. There are four shared elements listed as making up Japandi style. One of these is an appreciation for exquisite craftsmanship. Both cultures aim for work that will be relevant decades from now. Here, Kyoko Kumai of Japan works in stainless steel, and Agnita Hoban of Finland has created a trompe l'oeil woven work of gold and silver leaf and wood. Jin Suk So is from Korea. She studied and curated in Japan and lived most of her professional life in Sweden. She writes of observing the insistence on quality when she studied in Japan, embodied in the principle of monozukuri, which literally means making things, but also represents a mindset of putting one's soul into the making of the work. The second of the Japan Pandi elements is the use of natural and sustainable materials. Here, a kibia vine from the US and jute from Japan. As Norwegian American Kariloni notes, the Japanese have few forests and they conserve and use renewable bamboo in response. The Norwegians have many trees, but they are also careful to conserve them. Here we see twigs used in works by Jen Suk So and Jane Balsgaard. Balsgaard also uses plant paper. She makes herself from local plant materials from Denmark and Sweden. She leaves the evidence of the plants in her paper, paper pulp, similar to 200 year old Japanese paper pages that she saw on a trip to Japan. The third element attributed to Japandi is minimalism, seen here in abstract sculptures by Jiro Yanazawa of Japan and Mia Olsen of Sweden, made of jam, bamboo and sisal strips. Naoko Sereno of Japan notes that artists from both regions appreciate the aesthetics of subtraction, which she says bring beauty and abundance by reducing elements. Gudrun Pagder of Denmark expresses a nearly identical view. From Japanese art, crafts, and architecture, Scandinavians find inspiration. Though Japan is considered exotic and foreign, she says, we find an aesthetically common understanding of a minimalist idiom, finding the core of a composition, cutting off everything else that's unnecessary. The fourth element is based on a similarity between the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi and the related Danish-Norwegian concept of hoiga. Wabi Sabi sees beauty in the imperfect, like worn and weathered objects. Huiga is a term for creating contentment through your environment, including living with sentimental items. One commentator noted that both cultures value slowing the intense rhythm of life, valuing the passage of time and also its roots. Combined with minimalism and simplicity, the result is perfect in perfection, like this tower of antique Gampi papers from Japan. The K. Sekimachi says where indigo died with the scum of the indigo vat visible on the underside. Recognition of the kinship between these cultures has a lengthy history. 
we discovered artists and designers from the Nordic countries and Japan began artistic and actual exchanges as far back as the 19th century. The asymmetry, simplification, and profound respect for natural details found in Japanese art formed a prelude to Nordic modernism. Commercial exchanges were arranged by governments beginning after World War II and peaking in the 50s and 60s. The invitations to designers from Denmark, Finland, and Sweden, and the scholarships for Japanese craftspeople to study in Scandinavia were organized to improve industrial design, revive foreign trade, and create products that would be internationally successful. Tomiko Kawada describes having glass bowls she designed exhibited in a Tokyo department store with works by Swedish designer Stig Lindberg in the 1950s. She and colleagues spoke regularly about the affinities between Scandinavian and Japanese work, the emphasis on skill and natural materials, and the appreciation of simplicity they shared. Yasuhiso Kuyama studied ceramics with a teacher who had been sent to Scandinavia by the Japanese government. A Finnish designer visited the ceramics room where Kuyama worked and commented positively on his work. He credits those experience and his study of a Scandinavian book titled Decorative Art as influencing the work he creates today. Some artists in Japan, he told us they were always aware at some level of parallels in the work of artists from these regions. As Jane Balsgaard notes, I've exhibited with Japanese artists. They come from a culture so different from our own, but for reasons which I cannot explain, there is an inner attraction to the same materials and expressions. Naoko Sereno also describes observing aesthetics and values nurtured by both cultures that are common and sympathetic. Japandi reminds us of the life that values nature, a concept that both the Japanese and Scandinavians have traditionally valued. And Henriksen reads similarities between Japan and Scandinavia as being often quiet and underacted. Homage to Nordic Japanese synergy was intentional for some participants in Japandi. Baskets by Birgit Berkshire have roots in both regions, made of Japanese tatami paper, they are hand dyed with rust and made using a raya technique, which was developed by Vikings and popular with Danish Finnish design collectives from the 50s to the 70s. Sources from both Japan and Scandinavia animate the work of Norwegian artist Gertrude Halls. Initially, she was interested in Zen Buddhism, but when she visited Japan, Shintoism, the country's ancient nature worshiping religion, made a bigger impact. These and an epic Norse poem. Veluspa, Song of Sibyl, are sources to which Halls returns in her work. Direct cultural exchange often had an influence. Swedish artist Eva Vargo has lived in Japan and discovered there the magic of washi paper, old textiles mended as burrow, and broken ceramic pieces given new life by repair through kuntsugi. My vision has become multi-layered and my inspiration is a melting pot, she says. The work of Danish artist Greta Whitrock reflects her studies with indigo artists Shihoko Fukumoto and papermakers in Japan. I saw an aesthetic in Japanese design similar to Nordic tradition, she says. There is an agreement that, as they say in the Nordic countries, even less is even more. However it's designated, a style trend, part of these cultures' DNA, an aesthetic mystery, Japan captures a cultural kinship that artists from both regions recognize. We hope you've enjoyed the pairings we've presented. We produced a 144 page catalog that you can find on our website. You can also see all the works in the exhibition and catalog on Artsburg. We'll turn to the chat now and answer any questions. Thanks again for joining us. Hi everyone. And thanks a lot for checking into our uh, Petra Kucha number two. And I can see that we don't have any questions on the chat. <laughs> so this may be quick. Oh, found one. Okay. Ryan's asking whether natural and sustainable materials as a trade of Japandi are uh, any of the artists having challenges or issues sourcing materials affected by external factors like climate change. None of them have shared that with us, particularly an, an issue obtaining the materials. I will say though that several of them are very close um, to nature and to the impacts of how, uh, that they see in the environment. Kari Loney, for example, quite literally stepped on Akibia, which is an invasive vine here in Connecticut. Um, Hasako Sekijima in Japan has made works out of kudzu, which is another invasive material that people uh, find uh, in different spots around the US and elsewhere, we were actually um, asked to feature a basket of Hisakos in the New York Times Magazine because they wanted to do a piece on 
um, useful things that could be done with kudzu, which is otherwise despised apparently by people in lots of different areas. And Anne Henriksen's large piece, um, which we featured in the slides, was a reflection of some material that she found on the coast of, Dor of Norway that had been uh, part of an oil spill. And she wanted the piece that she made to reflect um, what we were doing in larger part to the environment. And I think that might be it. We can take you all off mute if anyone wants to ask a question, I think, because I've got my crack assistant here, Peter Fisher, who's assisting me from, from JUICE. Otherwise, it's terrific for you to have all tuned in and um, hope you'll get the opportunity to look at the Japandi uh, works on Artsper. Um, our next exhibit will be, that's another question we have from Helen, and it's um, going to be in the spring. It's looking like it'll be the last week, the very end of April, going into the first week of May. All right. Thank you again, and we'll look forward to seeing you then. We've been posting small video clips on our Instagram that you can see of the exhibition, which will culminate in a longer seven minute video, which will show at the uh, end of November or December, early December. I don't have the calendar in front of me, but we're, we're putting out the pieces and then we'll put the entirety out for you to review. Thanks again. Helen, actually, Helen has asked what the topic of the exhibition is going to be in the spring. That at this point is uh, to be determined. So we'll keep you posted. Hopefully you're on our email and you'll get information when we know more. Thank you.